The Senate will come to order. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam President. I move a call of the Senate. A call of the Senate has been moved and uh, properly sustained. Senator Baumgartner is excused. Mr. Majors, please pull the senators. Aguilar. Bomer. Murphy. Murphy. Cadman. Cadman. Crowder. Grantham. Guzman. Guzman. Harvey. Heath. Herpin. Hill. Hodge. Hodge. John. John. Johnston. Jones. Kefalas. Kerr. King. Martin was absent. Lambert. Lundberg. Marble. Marble. Newell. Nicholson. Renfro. Rivera. Roberts. Shuffle. Schwartz, Stedman, Doctrop, Todd, Uliberry, Zenzinger. Cadman, Guzman, Guzman. Hodge, John, King, Marble. Marble. Senator Brophy is excused. <laughs> Mr. Majority Leader. You want to raise the call? Thank you, Madam President. I move the call be raised. 
for the motion. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. The call be raised. Mr. Majority Leader. Senator Noel. Thank you, Madam President. I, um, I neglected to ask the uh, permission to go beyond the scope in the conference committee for the su suicide prevention bill, Senate Bill 88. So I move again to move to co conference committee and go beyond the scope. The question is whether or not to grant permission to Senator Newell to go beyond the scope of the differences in the conference committee. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Aye. Ayes have it. Permission is granted. Do we have any committee reports? Yes. Committee reports. May 5th, 2014, Committee on State Veterans and Military Affairs, after consideration of the Marriage Committee, recommends the following Senate Bill 220 before February Committee on Judiciary. May 5th, 2014, Committee on Appropriations, after consideration of the Marriage Committee, recommends the following House Bill 1369 before the Committee on February recommendation. May 5th, 2014, Committee on Judiciary, after consideration of the Marriage Committee, recommends the following House Bill 1375 be amended as follows now, so amended before the Committee on February recommendation. May 2nd, 2014, Committee on Judiciary, after consideration of the Marriage Committee, recommends the following House Bill 1386 be postponed indefinitely. Message from the House. Okay. Do we have a message? Special orders, second reading of bills. Senator Uliberry. You've heard the motion. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. The Senate will resolve itself into a committee of the whole for purpose of continuing special order, second reading of bills, calendar, and Senator Uliberry will take the chair. The committee will come to order and the coat rule is relaxed. That's also extended to staff and sergeants. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that House Bill 1029 be moved up and placed at the top of special order second reading of bills. The motion before the body is to move up House Bill 1029 to the beginning of the calendar. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and we will proceed to House Bill 1029. Mr. Majors, can you please read the title to House Bill 1029? House Bill 1029 by Representative Premier Veteran Senator Todd concerning a recodification of the laws governing reserve parking for persons with disabilities in connection there with making and reducing appropriations. Senator Todd. Thank you, Madam, uh, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Pardon me, Madam. I just came out of the House. Mr. Chair, and um, I move uh, House Bill 14-1029 and the Finance Committee Report and the Transportation Committee Report. To the Transportation Committee Report. In the Transportation Committee report, we did a couple of things. Um, we worked on the number and placement of accessible parking spaces that they should meet or exceed um, the code in Section 1106. We looked at the technical standards for accessible parking spaces ex and access aisles should post wheelchair access aisle, absolutely no parking sign. We added the technical standards for post or wall mounted um, signs and we um, worked on adding the statewide concern for looking at um, parking access for persons with disabilities. Is there any further discussion on the Transportation Committee report? Uh, members, I want to announce this before we head into debate on this bill. Uh, dinner will be served at 7.30 this evening, or if not sooner. So if you are hungry, food is on its way. Senator Grantham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Folks, the Transportation Committee report uh, did add in uh, some, some pretty significant changes in, in the legislation as what went in there, including the statewide concern aspect of this, which uh, is really a very significant change in, in what has been policy in regard to this uh, disability parking, et cetera. Um, this is something that I think takes a little bit of the control, and if not all of it, out of the hands of local jurisdictions where it has been and where it needs to be. I would ask for no vote on the Transportation Committee report. Is there any further discussion on the Transportation Committee report? 
Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of the Transportation Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. Oh. The ayes have it, and the committee report is adopted. To the, to the Finance Committee report. Senator Todd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And in the Finance Committee report, um, we continued with adding and making a few changes of striking law and adding um, public. We did some uh, relatively technical amendments to um, the Finance Committee report, and I ask for an aye vote. Is there any further discussion on the Finance Committee report? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of the Finance Committee report. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee report is adopted. There is an amendment on the desk. Mr. Majors, please read L009. Amendment L009, House Bill 1029 by Senator Todd. Amendment Gross Bill, page 5, line 22, strike A, substitute an application renewal. Senator Todd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, what amendment L0, I move L009. To the amendment. Thank you. And what L009 does is on page 5 of the reengrossed bill is um, that we added an application and renewal. And this is in terms of um, re renewing a, um, a um, let's see, the, the form for renewal for the um, dis disabled parking placard and ask for an I vote. Is there any further discussion on L009? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of L009. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and L009 is adopted. To the bill, Senator Todd. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And basically what House Bill 1029 has done, this is a TLRC bill. This came out of um, our summer study. And uh, the, this is a focus on uh, creating more of a statewide uniformity of regulation. It impacts the municipal regulation on persons living outside the municipal limits, the historical considerations, specifically whether the matter is one traditionally governed by the state or local government, and whether the Colorado Constitution specifically commits the matter to state and local regulation. And um, with that, I urge an I vote on House Bill 1029. Is there any further discussion on House Bill 1029? Senator Renfro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, with the amendment in Transportation Committee, I have some questions, I guess, since I don't serve on that committee. Does that mean that a development in Yuma, Colorado would have to have its development documents sent to the state for approval of its handicapped parking within a, a strip mall development? or? Or is that something that would still be done at the local level, but they would have to comply with, with what it, with the state standards? Because usually most municipalities have adopted the one version of the building code or another, which would have this within it. So, so how how does that play within this scenario, Senator Todd? Thank you, and um, thank you to the senator from Weld County. Uh, basically, there is conformity throughout the state. Most of the disabled parking is already statewide. Um, and so no other state currently allows its municipalities to water down the state laws for parking. And so when we look at what, what one disabled placard looks like, it looks the same statewide. So should the parking. And so basically, in answer to your question, um, uh, complying with what the state law is, is what uh, municipalities would need to do if there is not as great a need for the number of uh, parking spaces in different areas, then of course they would not have to um, have to comply with, with that. It would be reasonable based upon what that local municipality has a need for. Is there any further discussion? Senator Renfro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, Senator, you're confusing me with your answer to that question, saying that this is a statewide concern and we need to have the uniformity, but now you're telling me that, that the local municipality would be able to dictate what they decide they could do. You, to me, you can't have it both ways with the way you described the bill and then what you just said is the answer to my question, which still didn't even answer my question of who would approve a new development within any municipality, is it the municipality or would it have to go to the, a state level for approval? Is there any further discussion on House Bill 1029? 
Senator Aguilar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And what this is really setting is not who puts spots where, but what the rules about those spots would be once they're established. And so I didn't see anything in this bill that addressed anyone approving a spot. Senator Renfro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's exactly right. That's why I'm asking that question, because that's important to, to know if, if that's something that is also going to the state level with the language the way this is, is that the intent of the sponsor of this bill? Or, or is this something that will still be at the local level um, for approval of a development and, and where the spots are within the development um, pertaining to, to the, the current codes that are there? Or, or is this something that's gonna take it to a different level for approval? Is there any further discussion on House Bill 1029? There is an amendment on the desk. Mr. Majors, please read L010. Amendment L010 to House Bill 1029 by Senator Grant. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Amendment L010. The amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is an amendment, folks, that was um, taking this back to what it was prior to the Transportation Committee report, at least part of it, in regard to statewide concern. This is the, the problem that was just brought out in the previous line of questions and the, the previous debate. Uh, there are nuances across this state in many jurisdictions, mu jurisdictions, municipalities, counties, different places that offer different things that have to be addressed in different ways. And making this a statewide concern through this language uh, takes that ability, that power out of the hands of local jurisdictions in order to be able to uh, take care of the nuances of each locality and each um, various uh, the problems that you encounter when in certain developments, uh, in, in certain situations. This is taking it back to what the TLRC originally wanted in, in regard to this. They hadn't discussed this issue. And so if we want to talk about statewide concern, let's, let's take that issue back to them. Let's vet it fully in front of that committee and we can deal with it then. But I would ask for a I vote on L010. Senator Aguilar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, members, I actually wanted to go back to what Senator Renfro said, similar to stop signs. If you see a stop sign, you know what it means. No matter where in the state it is, the local municipality determines where they're going to put them. So this would be exactly the same for a disabled parking. If you see a disabled parking spot, you know what the rules are about it. We actually are blessed to have a number of um, people who can now drive using a wheelchair. And if they're in Denver or in Lakewood, they need to know that the disabled parking is the same as if it was a stop sign in Denver or Lakewood. And that's all this bill would do. And, um, and so I would reject the amendment. Is there any further discussion on L010? Seeing none, the motion before the, do, before the body is the adoption of L010. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no? No. The noes have it, and L010 is lost. To the bill. Is there any further discussion? Senator Todd. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and basically, um, the people who brought this bill forward are people who are facing this every day, trying to find a place to park, trying to make sure that they have accessibility. This is their only option. It is not a matter of choosing to park anywhere. Many of them drive a van. Many of them have that van and need to have the additional space to be able to get in and out of the car or in and out of the van. So this is a, this is a matter of accessibility. It is a matter of making sure that we are not um, preventing them from being able to park and get on with their lives, whether it's going to work or being able to have a quality life. So with that, I urge an I vote on House Bill 1029. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of House Bill 1029. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no? No. The ayes have it, and House Bill 1029 is adopted. Mr. Majors, can you please read the title to House Bill 1366? House Bill 1366 by Representative Singer and McNulty and Senators Johnston and King concerning reasonable restrictions on the sale of edible retail marijuana products. Senator Johnston. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
I move House Bill 1366 and move the Health and Human Services Committee report. The Health and Human Services Committee report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Health and Human Services Committee report uh, changed the rulemaking structure and uh, proposed a stakeholder process. Instead, we had some great discussion on that committee from the members about a potential merger of the bill as it used to be and the bill as it came out of uh, the committee. And so we have an amendment tonight that will, that will address that, I think, in a very successful way. But that is what the committee report did uh, out of HHS. Is there further discussion on the committee report? Seeing none, the motion before the, the body is the adoption of the Health and Human Services Committee Report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the committee report is adopted. To the bill. You want to do an intro as to the bill before doing amendments? You want to do that first? Eeny, meeny. <laughs> Senator King. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, currently in the United States, for uh, those states that have edible marijuana and have legalized uh, medical marijuana. 16 of those states have no edible marijuana. They don't allow that in their state and the rest have some very uh, restrictive um, laws surrounding that. Uh, we want to make Colorado the forefront um, in that ability to easily recognize edibles. Um, we have heard the problems when it comes to candy and so forth, and the idea of what kind of problems that causes for parents, for principals, for teachers, and so forth. And uh, this legislation is w well on its way towards putting us at the forefront of making that a functional process. Ask for an I vote. Senator Johnston. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just uh, agree with Senator King. I want to add that I think that we talked about this on the committee in a couple of different ways, which is for young kids uh, and for people who are recreational users and law-abiding citizens, we want to be able to make it such that there is an easy way for young kids in the home to be able to identify what is a uh, perfectly healthy gummy bear or Swedish fish or a piece of candy and what is one that might have, um, that's right, not per as, as perfectly healthy as gummy, gummy bears or Swedish fish can be. Um, and those that are, uh, do in fact have, have THC or marijuana infusion. For high school age kids, kids who might be wanting to uh, take some risks and make some decisions, and we have people in their lives, teachers, principals, myself included, I spent a lot of time in cafeterias trying to supervise what kids were and weren't doing. We want to be able to have some easily recognizable way for the adults and the caregivers in those lives to be able to know if, in fact, students are making or young people are making those choices and how to help intervene. And then third and finally, Senator Newell mentioned this on committee, for perfectly responsible adults who are out with friends at social gatherings and perfectly other responsible adults might want to have edibles there available to party, we'd like for people to be able to know what the distinction is between what's being offered. And so this is just, a, I think, an important step to trying to uh, adjust uh, that and make it easy for these things to be clearly identifiable. So I do have an amendment we'd like to move first, uh, which is Amendment 28. There's an amendment on the desk. Mr. Majors, please read L028. Amendment L028 to House Bill 1366 by Senator Johnson and Newell amend the Health Senator and Human Services. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to the members of the Health and Human Services Committee, almost to a, a number, every one of them helped Senator Newell and I draft this amendment. I'm happy to let her come up and talk about it as well. But this, um, this did what we, the Human Services Committee suggested we do at that committee hearing, which was to put in place a, a, a serious and rigorous stakeholder process to get involvement from all sides of the industry, from healthcare professionals, um, from uh, child advocates, child abuse prevention experts over the next six months to take the time and get feedback about what is a practicable strategy that we can use to make these items clearly identifiable clarify some language in the le legislative declaration about what it is we're hoping to accomplish. And then after that stakeholder process has taken place, those groups will present back to the HHS committee as well as to the regular uh, SMART Act to the Finance Committee. And then after that process is over, rulemaking will commence uh, after that, but not until after uh, this process has started. So I know there are a number of other members of the Health and Human Services Committee who helped us draft this who want to speak to it. Uh, but I think this was a really uh, good compromise. I think we have uh, all of our friends from the uh, 
Children's Hospital community, to the, to the industry, to uh, child advocates who are all supportive. And so um, I'd ask for an I vote, but I defer to my amendment co-sponsor, Senator Newell, or anyone else who'd like to talk about it. Senator Newell. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I, I thank uh, not only Senator, uh, Senator from Denver, but also other senators who helped us with the languaging on this. Um, it, it is better processed to have business at the table, health at the table, um, uh, regulators at the table, and make sure that we get um, we do it right. We are creating a new regulatory scheme here, and we need to be able to do it right in order to not only protect uh, kids, but, um, but also adults. Uh, and so I just wanted to uh, ask for an I vote on Amendment 028. Thank you. Senator Tocktrop. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I would ask for an um, a yes vote on the amendment. Uh, it looks like it's a, another study, and I, I think that's important. But you know, when you talk about this issue, and I hope when they do the study and they come back next year, if we are using medical marijuana as a therapeutic product, why don't we make it a therapeutic product? What is the harm in processing this into some kind of a, a pill or a liquid form that is not tasty like a brownie, like a gummy bear, or like ice cream, or anything like that. If you're going to manufacture a product for medicinal use, make it look like medicine, then you will not have a problem of kids getting into it, or less of a problem. The other issue I have with some of the things when we talk about marijuana, we are not treating the product the same way we are treating alcohol. And that was the understanding when we started looking at a lot of this marijuana and the marijuana industry, that it should be treated like alcohol. We're treating it separately. When we're saying that the kids that accidentally get a hold of a person's legal, and it's all legal now, marijuana, that it, it sets that parent to a higher standard of being responsible than if a parent, if a child accidentally gets into, uh, a parent leaves a half a bottle of beer, and I'm sure we all did that, or a half a glass of, of uh, alcohol. Well, maybe not. Some people might. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Nevertheless, you, you leave it on your coffee table or you have a party and uh, people leave, you know, their unused uh, drinks sitting around. You're tired, you go to bed, your kids get up before you do, and they may end up, you know, finishing drinking some of the drink. Um, we probably all did. And, um, but yet we're treating the, al the marijuana differently than we treat marijuana, and I really have a problem with that. So I hope you all, in your... Look at this very carefully and come back next year. But I just ask if you're going to, if, if medicine, medical marijuana is you treat it therapeutic, turn it into a therapeutic product and not gummy bears and all this stuff, and you won't have the problem. As a reminder, colleagues, we're on L028 dealing with the extensive stakeholder process that was introduced by Senators Johnston and Newell. Uh, Senator King, I had you next. Or did you? Senator Hill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Colleagues, I really appreciate your attention on this. I think this is an important issue we have going forward. I want to stand up and explain why I'm supporting this amendment. Uh, I came into this uh, bill as a member of the Health and Human Services Committee, uh, strongly opposed to the bill, uh, largely because I, I think it has not balanced well in the original form what the Constitution has given to us to do, namely how do we regulate this like alcohol, but you also look at the Constitution, it says the Department shall promulgate, the Department of Revenue shall promulgate rules relating to marijuana, marijuana, marijuana edibles, et cetera. And so coming to the, uh, coming to the bill, I, I didn't see how that worked. So we, we uh, came up with an amendment in committee. We had some important discussion. And I'll, I'll tell you, uh, I'm still concerned perhaps this amendment doesn't go quite far enough. I think if we're going to regulate retail marijuana, we should be regulating uh, medical marijuana as well. And so I think that's one of the weaknesses of this bill. But, but I want to say we've changed the language and we've worked really hard with a lot of the stakeholders. I want to thank Smart Colorado for their help with it, along with many of the other industry folks, uh, understanding what's really going on here. You see, we have over 100 different types of edible products here in Colorado. And the way this originally came out uh, was intended to protect our children. 
And I'll tell you, my children were there in committee with me that day. It was my uh, daughter Miette's birthday. It was her seventh birthday. And she actually sat up there at committee with me. And uh, so we had different examples. We had Swedish fish that were marijuana infused. And then we had regular candied Swedish fish. And friends, you can't tell the difference. And to me, that is a, that is a real problem. That's a threat to our kids' well-being. And it's not good enough. I actually took the, the two different cups, the Swedish fish with marijuana infused products and the regular, and had uh, my seven-year-old daughter smell it. And she could smell the difference. Friends, you can smell the difference, but I'm telling you that's not good enough. It doesn't go far enough just to say we can smell the difference. There really does need to be, based on what the voters have told us to do in the Constitution, there needs to be a way to distinguish between Swedish fish that have marijuana or THC in them and Swedish fish that don't. This is a necessary protection that's constitutional as well as uh, when the Constitution says we should regulate it like alcohol, alcohol is in a way we, it, uh, we protect our kids from it. And so we need to be protecting our kids from these marijuana products. So one of the struggles, however, was when we identified this as just visual identification, whether it's shape, size, um, or packaging, we're missing a whole group of edibles out there, namely some of the homemade brownies or cookies, some of the sodas, whatnot, where once you take it out of the packaging, it's no longer readily identifiable. So the goal, uh, again, we worked with a lot of the stakeholders in this, the goal in uh, wordsmithing this was to say our, our desires that you can tell outside of the packaging, that our kids can tell a difference between marijuana infused M&Ms and regular M&Ms, that our kids can tell a difference just by looking at them between marijuana infused lemon drops and regular lemon drops. But, but the goal here is to actually make this a little bit broader, to say that we give the chance if there's a way, if there's a practicable way to regulate um, whether it's soda, whether it's uh, cookies, whether it's brownies, anything else that we come up with, while it is legal, again, the Constitution says Department of Revenue shall regulate these things. And so this provides us a mechanism to do that that doesn't single out or target any one specific part of the industry, but it says let's have as broad a protection as possible that fits within the guise of the Constitution. So again, I want to thank all the stakeholders in this, um, and, and thanks again to the sponsors for being able to work for some language that, that really does protect our constitutional requirements as well as protecting our kids. Senator King. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, and this is um, one of those evolving issues. You know, I had an opportunity to speak with my father who was a pharmacist for 40 years, and he had looked at this and said, this is what happens when you don't have a pharmacist writing your drug laws. You're dealing in ounces. You should be dealing in milligrams of Delta 9 THC. Delta 9 THC is a psychoactive drug, the thing that gets you high from marijuana. Not ounces, you have no idea how much Delta 9 THC is in an ounce of marijuana from one to the next. So if we're going to make this a science, which we're trying to do, we need to be talking in the right terminology. And the right terminology is delta-9 THC and the milligrams in each serving. That way, from citizen to citizen, we all know the amount of psychoactive ingredient in each of those servings. I don't see us doing that this session, but we do need to move towards a more scientific way of dealing with this, as some other states have. Ask for an eye, or eye on the amendment, please. Senator Lumberg. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members, I heard this bill in committee, and as it was originally written, uh, could not support the bill. I did support the bill. Um, with the amendment, uh, but I much more support the amendment that's before us today. So uh, I ask for an I vote as well. Is there any further discussion on L028? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of L028. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Ayes have it. L028 is adopted. To the bill. Actually, there is another amendment on the desk. Mr. Majors, please read. 
Amendment L027. Amendment L027, House Bill 1366. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, one more amendment here to 1366. This is one we're working on. This just clarifies the language around uh, the appropriation of signs or symbols used in other existing Colorado industries by uh, the marijuana industry. There is some struggle with uh, overlapping marketing, particularly in some of our resort communities, and so they're working hard to clarify language that has been in law already, uh, and this just adds two words to clarify uh, that those symbols uh, can't be appropriated for use on the new industry. I'd ask for an I vote. Is there any further discussion? Oh, sorry, I, I move Amendment 27. Thank you. That's appropriate motion. Senator Lumberg. Thank you, Madam Chair. Finally, an Mr. amendment that starts Chair, saying no more Colorado logos. <laughs> any further conversation on L027? Did you say it does not? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of L027. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Ayes have it. L027 is adopted. Now to the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I ask for an I vote on 1366. Is there any further discussion on House Bill 1366? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of House Bill 1366. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. And 1366 is adopted. Mr. Majors, please read the title to House Bill 1343. House Bill 1343 by Representative Singer and Ryan Center. Talk Drop Workers' Compensation Coverage for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder for Peace Officers. Senator Tokdrop. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move uh, 1343, and as for an I vote, this bill uh, came out re-engrossed re from the House, and what we're doing is we're looking at um, setting up a task force um, to look at the uh, issue around post-traumatic stress disorder for peace officers, and I think anybody that is um, aware when a police peace officer leaves a the home, they're putting themselves in harm's way and they never know what they see. And uh, sometimes they internalize this, or many times they internalize this, and then develop um, problems. And we just want to look at making sure that there's a task force to look at this issue and study it and bring back some um, good recommendations next year. And I just ask for an I vote on um, 1343. Senator Tocktrop, there is a local government committee report. Would you also like to move that and uh, explain what it did? Local government committee. Oh, thank you, madam. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. I did forget about the committee report. And what this does is it just um, adds a uh, um, safety clause because the bill states that the task force meet no later than July 1st, 2014. And uh, that's why I added a um, safety clause because otherwise um, the um, bill would not come into effect until August 6th and I just ask for an I vote on the committee report. Senator Tocchtrop, will you please move the committee report and the bill? I move, yeah, thank you. I will move um, the local government committee report and um, Senate Bill 1440, 1343 and ask for an I vote on both. That was um, moving House Bill 1343 and the local government committee report. The local government committee report has been explained. Is there any further discussion on the committee report? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of the local government committee report. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the committee report is adopted. To the bill. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion before the... Senator Harvey. Senator Harvey. Thank you, Mr. President. Chair. And um, there's an amendment on the desk. I take that back, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Majors, please read L022. Amendment L022. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move. L022 to House Bill 1343. And what this simply says is this bill is dealing with uh, a board that will look over um, workers' compensation issues de dealing with post traumatic stress syndrome for police officers. And it, it puts in place two co chairs that will be um, um, chairing 
the committee and one of those is a chief of police which I or, or yeah chief of police which I think is inappropriate to have somebody who is um, directly being impacted by this legislation to be the chairman of the board so it, this amendment simply takes out the, the that section that says that um, on on page 4 lines 14 through 16 it says um, co-chair the task the the governor shall appoint a task force member who is a re representative of an executive department to serve as the co-chair of the task force and the task force member appointed by the president of the fraternal order of police shall serve as a co-chair of the of the task force and I'm taking out the part that says that a the president of the fraternal order of police shall serve as a co-chairman I don't think that's appropriate so I'm striking that out and then striking out co-chairs and saying there will be only one chair but that one chair will not be the president of the fraternal order of police Senator talk to ask for an I vote uh, thank you, and I ask for an, a no vote. Um, the people that are most impacted uh, by uh, this situation with PS uh, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder are the police. And what better group of people to to be co-chairs of that than the people that impact them the most? So I ask for a uh, uh, no vote on the amendment and a yes vote on the bill. Yeah. Is there any further discussion on L022? Seeing none. Senator Balmer. Takes FOP out. Oh, it's FOP. It takes them out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members, I rise in uh, respectful opposition to um, Amendment 22. Let me tell you why. We heard this bill in committee, and this bill has had a journey. Um, at the beginning, it did a lot more. And then it was discussed that maybe we should have a task force. Now, I wasn't involved in any of those discussions. When it came to our committee, it was already a task force bill. And I think it's a good idea to have co-chairs when you have a task force. Um, I don't know who the president of the Fraternal Order of Police is. I honestly have no idea who that is. But I know the executive director. This is a gentleman that comes down here to the Capitol uh, I don't know, once every three weeks is the only time I ever see him. But uh, he works really hard. He's a Vietnam veteran. And um, one veteran to another, uh, I have developed great respect for this gentleman. And I think that um, if we're going to have this task force, having two co-chairs is just fine with me. I don't understand the rationale for eliminating the voice of uh, the whoever the president of the FOP is going to appoint. So in this case, I think it's a good idea to have co-chairs, and I think that uh, a Vietnam veteran is going to do a good job appointing somebody to this task force, and I'm not afraid to have a Vietnam veteran be in charge of that appointment. So I will ask for a respectful no on Amendment 22. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I don't know the gentleman. He could be a wonderful person, maybe a great person. It, you know, there's a lot of Vietnam veterans out there. That doesn't mean anything to me. The issue is that it could be an, have an appearance of a conflict of interest. And the last thing we want to have on a board like this, which is a very important board, is for the public to think that there was a conflict of interest. Senator Marble. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Regarding L022 on House Bill 1343, I think it deserves a lot of consideration by all of us. One of the things that we do here in the legislative process is try to steer away from any sense of impropriety. And if anybody would even have a question as to, uh, you know, conflict of interest, I would, I would say consider this. Uh, I myself have not made up my mind, but I am saying that after hearing the two good senators previously, 
before you vote, take it into consideration. I know what a conflict of interest can do to a bill. And if it is brought out and it is because of who is on the board, um, definitely I have been in that position where my livelihood and things that I put forth were considered that. And I am considering this very seriously and thinking that it is probably a no vote. But please, take it into consideration. Look at it very carefully. Uh, it's just the sense of impropriety in itself raises flags. Not that I don't love the FOP and the people who are on it. Um, believe me, some of them are my very good friends. I just don't want it looking different than what it is intended to be. Is there any further discussion on amendment L022? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of L002, L022. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. The noes have it, and L022 fails. To the bill. Is there any further discussion? Oh. Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of House Bill 1343. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 1343 is adopted. Mr. Majors, please read the title to House Bill 1384. House Bill 1384 by Representatives Pedersen and McNulty and Senators Uliberry and Crowder concerning rigor based tuition assistance for students at post secondary institutions. Senator Crowder. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move uh, House Bill 1384 as well as the uh, uh, committee reports. To the uh, Senator uh, Uliberry. Thank you, Madam Chair. To the Appropriations Committee report, uh, we added in an Appropriations Clause. Okay. Is there any further discussion on the Appropriations Committee report? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of the Appropriations Committee report. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The Appropriations Committee report is adopted. To the bill. Senator Crowder. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is basically a it's a new concept of what we're looking at for the future. You know, we have basically we're having a, da a downward trend of uh, trend of uh, student as well as an upward trend of cost. And so we're looking at, you know, putting a pilot to get pilot project together. Basically, the rigor 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 based tuition, which would be a private public uh, cooperation of the two, in which we could assist students from now until the future. It's uh, somewhat simple. It's just it's just a good bill. Senator Uliberry. Thank you, Madam Chair. I uh, agree with my co-sponsor on this. This is uh, an amazing tool that we can use to help build for the future, invest, and ensure long-term that students in Colorado can afford a higher education. This bill uh, came out of a lot of conversations about wanting to ensure that higher education is more accessible for all families in the state. Uh, whether you're going to community college, a four-year research institution, or looking for post-secondary technical training. Um, the way that this is set up is it creates the College Opportunity uh, Scholarship Initiative and allows students to apply for the scholarship based on rigor. And so those criteria will be set up through a stakeholder process. But at the end of the day, we want to ensure that the students who are receiving these dollars are capable of completing the coursework that they're enrolling in and that they are um, well prepared for the future. Um, that's why this bill also makes an investment in ensuring that these students have um, some wraparound support services by moving um, some resources into student success. Senator Crowder. Thank you, Madam Chair. You know, I, I need to define rigor. It's basically community involvement and basically the history of the young man or woman. Uh, you know, if, if, if that individual has been very involved in athletics, sports, or, uh, you know, uh, school, community events, this, this will be something that's taken into consideration also. You know, what we're looking for is very well qualified students to carry the, uh, you know, the torch of education further because I think we are the recipients as a, as a society. With that, I would ask for a yes vote. Is there any further discussion? Senator Renfro. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, I rise uh, with some concerns about the bill and, and uh, was hopeful to vote for this, but after 
reading, hearing it in committee and everything, I was a no vote in committee. And, uh, and, and it's disturbing because I think it's important for us to have a scholarship fund and to do things like this. It's just the way this is set up and, and the way we're going about it. Um, if you look at the bill itself, under the legislative declaration on to start the bill, under A, the first word it, it talks about of the General Assembly, Assembly hereby declares that the College Opportunity Scholarship Initiative created in this part is intended to, the first part it says is award scholarships. That's the first words. But members, this is not going to award a single scholarship in the next year. We're not awarding scholarships. In the future, we will, out of this potentially, hopefully, but that's not what we're setting up at this point. Instead, this fund was created from when we used to have a loan program at the state, and we got out of that program a few years ago of servicing loans, and so we sold the portfolio, and that sales of that was 30 million, 33 million, it went into this, it was just actually sitting in, out there, and so this bill has taken that funds that was directed through that sale to go to scholarships, and so that's how this was created and, and brought here um, for the money. But what we're gonna use this money for instead of scholarships is we're gonna take 10% of it and we're gonna give it to nonprofits to set up programs to try to help kids that get scholarships graduate from college. Think of that logic there. So we're spending 10% of the money and actually another 3% on aside from that that CDE gets or Department of Higher Ed gets to, to, to manage the program because we always have to have a, a cut for government somewhere in something. But so we're taking 10% of this money, instead of just giving it in scholarships, we're gonna give it to either government program, government departments, which 30% of it could go to, and 70% of it could go to nonprofits to try to help kids graduate from college and to try to set up partnerships with these um, nonprofits to, I guess it was told to us, to bring their money into this program and hopefully at some point in the future the state would match this dollar that they would bring. But that's not part of this bill, that's just future talk that's not in it, that's not what it's doing. Instead, we're, we're creating a scholarship assistance program that we're not gonna give money to students. And so I'd ask for a no vote and let's give scholarships to students. Senator Uliberry. Thank you, Madam Chair. This issue came up in committee, so I want to address it head on. When we talk about the creation of a scholarship fund for the state, uh, we're talking about building a long-term investment to ensure that it's sustainable over the long haul and we can actually build up uh, the, the reserve in the account and then have it sustained just like any other scholarship fund. So you're actually building interest off of that and able to regenerate over time without having to come back year after year after year to the legislature and specifically uh, asking for general fund dollars to be reinvested into that pool. So think of this as an investment. Uh, that's why um, in this first year, scholarships may not be awarded because we're actually building up the corpus to do the investment. Uh, secondly, the fund, as was described by the previous speaker, was created when Colorado sold out its interest of operating uh, student loan programs. And so in 2009, 2010, there was a federal reform. Um, there was the federal um, education loans where the federal government would pass on loans to states or to private lenders and states or private lenders would make an interest costing the student more to go to school. Uh, in 2010, Congress adopted a law and was signed by the president that said, we're gonna get out of that business of passing loans to a middleman and charging more to students and instead just say, we're gonna offer direct student loans. That meant Colorado got out of the student loan business and we had interest on the sale of our student loans to the tune of about $33 million. Those dollars have sat in a cash fund for us to use for financial aid, but we have not put the parameters on the use of those scholarship dollars. So the idea of, one, the transfer of the dollars from the student loan program to this cash fund was to use those dollars specifically for financial aid purposes. And it was so ambiguous at the time that there was never um, real guidance for the legislature about how to use those dollars. So those dollars have not yet been used. This is putting those dollars to use, building a corpus, a long-term investment to ensure that all students who are 
interested in attending an institution of higher education, again, whether it's a technical university, a four-year research college, or a community college, that they have some financial assistance with demonstrated need. To the second point raised by the speaker, again, this came up in committee, um, there was a question of why not just give all of the money away right away? Uh, and when you think about an investment, you actually have to be prudent and be a good steward of those dollars, and you have to ensure that those investments are good. And so you're not just uh, throwing money at a student, but at the end of the day, you are actually investing in those students and supporting their success. Uh, I use the statement that resource without support does not equate opportunity. In another way, if we just give scholarship dollars to students and no support to actually enter uh, an institution of higher ed, we may be just flushing money down the drain. That's why up to 10%, that's not a requirement that we go up to that threshold, but up to 10% of the dollars can be uh, used for student support services. Maybe it's academic mentorship in their first year. For a first generation college student who's never attended a university before, their parents have never attended a university before, those are the kinds of investments that would be made to ensure that those students can be successful as they enter into a four-year institution, a technical university, or a community college. Um, again, if we just give them resources and not support, it may not equate to the investment that we want, which is ultimately them achieving an advanced degree. So that's why there's a, a set aside for that amount. Um, if we just gave all of the scholarships out in this one year, then we would be coming back next year for a $33 million investment in general fund dollars. Instead, this is a wise investment that will build over the long term, building the corpus so ultimately this can be a sustainable scholarship fund for all Colorado students who want to achieve a higher education. Other discussion? Senator Newell. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to get, I, since I don't serve on the Education Committee, I just wanted to better understand. So the, the term rigor-based um, method, if I could find out more about that. And so I'm trying to figure out also fiscally that we have um, now the Financial Needs Scholarship Fund, which is over $36 million just sitting there not being used right now. Um, isn't that currently going to scholarships of people in financial need? And then secondly, um, what is the difference between a financial need fund and a rigor-based method? Thank you. Senator Uliberry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in response to the questions, again, I'll state uh, the financial need fund was not being used. It was set aside, and then there weren't parameters put onto the use of those dollars. And so they have not been utilized to support uh, financial aid. So just wanted to be very clear. They've been sitting there, have not been used. This is putting them to use. Second, um, in regards to uh, your question about academic rigor, this will be defined, and the terms of the scholarship will be defined through an extensive um, uh, advisory group that will work uh, to help define that term. But as we put it in the bill, it's uh, generally referred to as those who have the demonstrated ability to achieve. So not just about their financial position, uh, because there are many programs that specifically look at financial need. Uh, Pell Grant is probably the most notable financial need assistance. It is a grant for those students whose families don't make enough for them to pay for um, higher ed. One of the things that we've noticed and that is apparent um, for uh, families that fall just outside of Pell eligibility but below the ability to afford college is that they don't have many other financial options. The idea of rigor-based is something that was born out of compromise in the House led by Representative Pedersen and Representative uh, McNulty. And the idea was to look at how you can assess the ability, the likelihood of success of these students based on their academic performance, their involvement in extracurricular activities, the ability to really fully um, perform in a, in a high achieving academic uh, position, but not necessarily just based on financial need. There are many families who don't qualify for Pell and may not um, be in the running for other uh, highly competitive uh, private scholarships, but still need financial assistance. And the idea was academic rigor would be a term developed to really make sure that we're targeting those middle class families that have been squeezed and have been priced out of higher ed. Senator Jones. So the House defined academic rigor. Hmm. Um, although they made a smart decision this morning. So my question is uh, similar to some of these others about the criteria. Uh, it says extent practical grants, tuition assistance must be awarded to students 
representing rural and urban areas of the state. I just wanted to make sure that people like in Longmont or Lafayette or Louisville or Erie are eligible because I would consider them suburban more than urban or rural. Yes, they are. Senator Yulberry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would contend that those communities that are in the greater Boulder, Denver metro area would be classified as urban. Um, that if you drive from here to Colorado Springs or here to, to Boulder, uh, you never leave the urban metropolitan area. Uh, you have a continuous city. Um, and so I would say, uh, although the city lines and the municipal lines are very sacred in this building, I get that, I would still contend that those cities, uh, even my home city now of Westminster, uh, would qualify as an urban area. So this is meant to encapsulate all students in, in Colorado. Any further discussion on House Bill 1384? Senator Crowder. You know what I heard up here is the concept is disturbing. It should be. You know, what we're doing is we're thinking outside the box. We're thinking about a whole new concept. You know, this is, a, this is a, the mark of the future, I believe. And I, I do believe this, this, this public-private uh, uh, cooperation is just the way to go. And I think, uh, you know, we just spent on this uh, SB1, uh, was it the $100 million? We, we have the potential with this to, to avoid that in the future. So I, I think, you know, it's, it's kind of exciting if you get into it a little bit. And I, uh, with, that, with that, Madam, I just move the bill forward. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of House Bill 1384. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. The ayes have it and the bill is passed. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to House Bill 1376. House Bill 1376 by Representatives Buckner and Moreno and Senator Eulaberry concerning the analysis of information relating to the academic success of public school students based on student placement in different instructional groups or course levels in connection there with making an appropriation. Senator Eulaberry. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move House Bill 1376. Please, please continue. This bill um, conducts an analysis of information related to the academic success of public school students based on student placement in different instructional groups or course levels. And uh, it's really disaggregating data that's currently collect collected to ensure that students aren't um, being denied an opportunity to succeed in the state of Colorado, that they aren't being unduly put into a category and uh, rising to the bar that we've set for them and then not having the opportunity to move forward uh, academically. Is there any discussion on House Bill 1376? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of House Bill 1376. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it and the bill is passed. Mr. Majors, would you please read House Bill 1382? House Bill 1382 by Representatives Young and Wilson, Senators Kerr and Roberts, concerning the delivery of online education within the public elementary and secondary education system in a condition there with making an appropriation. Senator Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We move House Bill 1382 and the Appropriations Committee Report and the Education Committee Report. To the Education Committee Report. Who would like to speak? Senator Kerr. Education Committee Report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The Education Committee report, uh, first of all, we, the lines one through eight, uh, we worked on the definition of an online school or online program. Lines uh, nine through the rest of the uh, first page there, uh, we moved around a few of the members for the task force that will be looking at uh, the further work on online schools and also uh, the pilot programs. Going on to the next page, uh, we made sure that the open, that uh, the task force meetings would be su subject to the open meeting requirements and will also be uh, broadcast via the internet. Is there any further discussion on the Education Committee report? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of the Education Committee Report. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the Education Committee Report is adopted. To the Appropriations Committee Report, Senator Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Appropriations Committee Report basically struck the half an FTE. I asked for an aye vote. Is there any further discussion on the Appropriations Committee Report? 
Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of the Appropriations Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the Appropriations Committee report is adopted. To the bill. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we're pleased to bring you this bill related to Colorado K-12 online education. What we did was, along with two of the House members, formed a, a group task force that of disparate interests, different uh, folks very involved in online education, folks from Colorado BOCES to the Independence Institute, um, Branson District Super Assistant Superintendent, Academy Online, again, a wide variety of thoughtful people who came together and made certain recommendations. We feel that uh, this bill reflects that. We had strong support in committee from them, and um, it's just a good bill for online education. For me, what the motivation is, a lot of my areas are rural and remote. We like to make sure that kids in all of our schools, no matter the size, have the opportunity to uh, have the education that many of the folks in the more urban areas have access to. So with that, um, just ask for your support. Senator Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to reiterate that the, the purpose behind when, when we got together early in the session, uh, appointed this uh, task force to uh, work together in, in a very quick timeline of seven weeks to come back with some recommendations. And they did come back with recommendations, both what they thought that we could move forward with immediately, which uh, you'll see reflected in the bill uh, right now. And I talked about the definitions, uh, setting up uh, the, the further task force, which then uh, some of the recommendations, some of the things that they thought should be addressed, but they did not think in our particular timeline uh, worked for this bill. Uh, that's why we have a, a second uh, task force set up uh, through this bill to look at some of those uh, that that everyone thought needed a, a little more um, delving into, uh, you could say. Uh, with that, this is, has been a, a process to make sure that all kids throughout Colorado have access to quality online programs. And I just really want to stress the word quality there. Uh, as more and more online programs become available uh, to students in all parts of our state, uh, I do think that there are some programs that are higher quality than others. Uh, that's going to be true of our neighborhood schools, our charter schools, every kind of school. But we want to make sure that uh, every single uh, kid and parent who signs up for their uh, uh, through an online program. Uh, has has a basic guarantee of it being a quality program. Uh, with that, we'd ask for an I vote on House Bill 1382. Is there any further discussion on House Bill 1382? Senator Crowder. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, do I understand this, that this, the online is just uh, within the school? It's not going it's, this is not online. This is not online offering to a, a student at home. This is online within the school, is that correct? Senator Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, this is for any online program, whether a, a student uh, is part-time in a, in a brick and mortar school, part-time uh, purely online, or for full-time online students, students who uh, do their entire uh, educational uh, experience, uh, whether it's at home or, or somewhere else, but outside of a brick and mortar. So it would cover uh, students in, in all sorts of different circumstances, but it would include students who are at home. Senator Carter. Oh, thank you. So how do you, you know, there, there's been studies in the past where kids do just online studying and they, they do so poorly at it. I thought this was going to be, you know, in conjunction with regular school work. Is that correct? Senator Kerr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so uh, we, we can definitely get into a further discussion. Uh, that, is, that is definitely what this bill is meant to do, is to make sure that all programs and all schools that offer an online component uh, are held to rigorous standards that the students uh, who are signed up for these schools and programs uh, meet the same uh, 
standards-based education that kids in a brick and mortar, a neighborhood school, a charter school uh, meet. And uh, absolutely, are there, there are studies out there saying that there are kids that struggle in an online situation. There are kids who struggle at their neighborhood school. There are kids who struggle in the charter school they go to. Uh, I also happen to know firsthand that there are a lot of kids who blossom in an online environment. And uh, I, I can tell you uh, firsthand from my experience, being a teacher of online students, that it is not a program that is for everyone. I would, in my professional opinion, online schools are not, are, are not the best option for every student. But they are the best option for some students. And that's what we want to make sure is those students who, who and their parents who opt into a program or a school that is a, an online school or program, that they can be assured that it is a high quality, rigorous uh, situation. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And a really good question, um, Senator from the San Luis Valley. Uh, what I would say also in terms of personal motivation, eight years ago my son was looking to drop out of school or go online education. For me, I didn't know as a parent what online education would really mean and how do we know there's quality as well as access to online education. I think you've referenced some suggestions that we've had that it's not always quality. So this is to get to that place uh, where we know students who, uh, whether they're in a blended learning environment with a teacher or if they're at home, that they are getting quality education that will further them down the road. So um, I think this, this is a good bill for getting to that baseline and holding people accountable for that. Senator Crowder. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, and you're hitting on my concern. You know, it's been a few years, but the, one of the largest online schools in the state had 3,000 students, but they only had one graduation. And that, that, that was not fair to the children. So if this can be integrated to a way that, that, the, that the discipline of continued learning is in, incorporated, I'd be all for it. That's what I'm saying. Senator Roberts. Another thing that I think is worthy of pointing out is um, that while this is student-centered, student we made sure that the teacher is a critical component, that we recognize the role of the teacher in here. So uh, absolutely, we're trying to get to what your concerns are. Senator Kerr. Senator Newell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to uh, rise in support of this because uh, if you are a supporter of online schools, then you would want this bill because it is looking at what are the benefits, um, what the transparency that, that you have that can uh, validate your thoughts about online education. On the other hand, if you are not a supporter right now of online education, then you would also want to vote on this because it will indeed give us the transparency and show us um, what are the problem areas and what are the solutions that we can work with. So um, I, I think this is a, a great idea to, um, you know, you hear the disparaging of online education sometimes and, and uh, it may be unfounded, it may be unfair, or it may be true. But either way, uh, we need to find that out and I think that this helps. So I ask for an I vote. Is there any further discussion on House Bill 1382? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of House Bill 1382. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and House Bill 1382 is adopted. Mr. Majors, please read the title to House Bill 1102. House Bill 1102 by Representative Bennett and Senator Kerr concerning giving to the education programs and public schools and in connection there with making an appropriation. Senator Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move House Bill 1102 and the Appropriations Committee Report and the Appropriations Committee Report and the Education Committee Report. To the Education Committee Report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In the Education uh, Committee, we uh, changed, rather than having a, a full universal screening that each administrative unit is strongly encouraged to do that uh, universal screening, 
And uh, we also changed the uh, way of funding that, uh, that the administrative unit could apply for the money available uh, through a grant program. And um, with that, I ask for the adoption of the Education Committee report. Is there any further discussion on the Education Committee report? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of the Education Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the Education Committee report is adopted. To the Appropriations Committee report dated April 29th. That's the first. Senator Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The first Appropriations Committee report, uh, we uh, cut down a few other uh, items. Uh, we asked that uh, in the original bill that there's a qualified person uh, of at least a half-time basis to administer the AU's GT programs, uh, that we also uh, added that that it would be a grant program uh, rather than uh, every single AU would be getting the same amount of money. And uh, most of the rest of that is moving some subparagraphs around, so I ask for an I vote. Is there any further discussion on the first Appropriations Committee report? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of the Appropriations Committee report. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the first Appropriations Committee report is adopted. To the second Appropriations Committee report dated May 2nd, Senator Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The second Appropriations Committee report was the haircut for the gifted and talented bill. Uh, this cut the appropriation by 45%, and I ask for an I vote. Is there any further discussion on the second Appropriations Committee report? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of the Appropriations Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the Appropriations Committee report is adopted. To the bill, Senator Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And after all the committee reports, uh, we're back here to the floor. Uh, happy to ask for your support for 1102. As uh, mentioned, we are trying to get more trained personnel into all the administrative units, uh, make sure that uh, trained personnel are there to administer the screenings that we're asking all of our administrative units to do both at uh, by the second grade uh, level and also again uh, by eighth grade. And uh, there's, we've, uh, we don't have quite the amount of money that we wanted to originally, but we are getting some more money out there. I think that this is a, a good way of making sure we've heard from our education folks, uh, no more unfunded mandates. This is a uh, funded way of making sure that all kids have the opportunity to be identified if they have their the GT qualities and that they are getting served the way that they should. Uh, with that, I ask for an I vote on House Bill 1102. Senator Balmer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also ask for an I vote on House Bill 1102. I want to appreciate, uh, I want to thank the sponsor for his work on this. I too wish that it had more money in the bill, but um, thanks for all your hard work. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on House Bill 1102? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of House Bill 1102. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and House Bill 1102 is adopted. Mr. Majors, please read the title to House Bill 1396. House Bill 1396 by Representative Ryan and Senator King concerning clarification of the authority of persons acting on behalf of the Department of Public Health and Environment to administer the medical marijuana registry. Senator King. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move House Bill 1396 and the Health and Human Services Committee report. To the Health and Human Services Committee report. Senator King. Mr. Chair, could I have a senatorial five? We'll stand in a senatorial five. The committee will come back to order. We've uh, had House Bill 1396 and the Health and Human Services Committee report moved. Is there any discussion on the Health and Human Services Committee report? Senator Stedman. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Colleagues, I want to ask for a no vote on this committee report. And I, I want to ask for this no vote not because I have a concern about the policy. As a matter of fact, I probably support the policy on this bill. My concern about this committee report, my reason for asking you to vote no, is that I believe it violates the state constitution. I want to read to you the bill title on House Bill 1396 concerning clarification of the authority of persons acting on behalf of the Department of Public Health and Environment to administer the medical marijuana registry. This bill was a department bill initiated because of issues that came up in the audit of the medical marijuana program at CDPHE. And one of the issues that was pointed out is that the Constitution um, specifically assigns this function to employees of CDPHE and apparently they have a vendor or a consultant or somebody that they've brought in to help with some of the tech issues around the registry. And this bill is intended to correct those problems that came up during the audit. But let's look at the committee report. Does the committee report have anything to do with delegating authority to administer the registry from employees to others? No. This committee report has to do with defining the patient primary caregiver relationship and to put more specific requirements on caregivers. Now, there may be valid policy reasons to do this, but in my estimation, this is a blatant violation of Article 5, Section 17 of the State Constitution and Article 5, Section 21 of the State Constitution. We don't amend bills in a way that contravenes or extends the bill title. Bills are to have a single subject clearly expressed in their title, and this bill had a very specific bill title with a very clear original purpose, which was to address issues that came up during an audit. That's why the bill was introduced, and now it's picked up this committee report, which if it weren't a committee report, I'd ask for a ruling as to whether it fit the bill title, but because it's a committee report, we're required to consider it, and that's why I'm asking you to check our constitutional responsibilities on the legislative process and to avoid abuses of the process like this where we allow amendments to completely go outside the scope of bill titles, outside the scope of the original purpose and intent of the legislation to do something that somebody may think is a good idea. And I'm not debating the merits of this proposal. My objection is purely on process and the Constitution is very clear when it charges us with the responsibility to put a title on our bills that says what they're about and stick within the four corners of that title. Colleagues, this doesn't come close to any of the four corners. I'm a no vote and I would ask you to vote no as well. Is there any further discussion on the uh, Health and Human Services Committee report? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of the Health and Human Services Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it and the Health and Human Services Committee report is adopted. To the bill, Senator King. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this bill clarifies that the authorized employees of the state health agency is defined by Article um, 17, Section 14 of the Colorado Constitution um, includes independent Contractors. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Article 18, Section 14. I can't read my Roman numerals, apparently. Um, the bill also states that independent contractors are not state employees for the purpose of state employee benefits, including um, a public employee retirement association benefits. That's what the bill does, and ask for an I vote. Is there any further discussion on House Bill 1396? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of 1396. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and House Bill 1396 is adopted. Mr. Majors, please read the title to House Bill 1001. House Bill 1001 by Representative Senior Senator Nicholson concerning the creation of property tax reimbursement for taxpayer that owes property tax and property that has been destroyed by a natural cause in connection therewith making or reducing appropriations. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move we lay over House Bill 1001 until tomorrow, May 6th.
The motion before the body is to lay over House Bill 1001 to tomorrow, May 6th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and House Bill 1001 will lay over. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move we rise and report. The motion before the body is to rise and report. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the committee will rise and report. The Senate will come back to order. Please add Senator Brophy to the roll. Senator Uliberry. Thank you, Madam President. The committee has met and had a number of bills uh, under consideration. Mr. Majors, would you please read the report? Thank you for the 2014, Madam President. Your committee will bring the report is under consideration of the final task bills being second read the make final recommendations to the run. House Bills 1360 is amended, 1319 is amended, 1381 is amended, 1385 is amended, 1029 is amended. 1366 is amended, 1343 is amended, 1384 is amended, 1376, 1382 is amended, 1102 is amended, 1396 is amended. Pass on second reading in order to revise. Place on the counter for third reading and final passage. House Bill 1001 laid over until May 6, 2014, when taking place on the calendar. House Bill 1316 lost on second reading. Senator Uliberry. Thank you, Madam President. I move for the adoption of the report. Any discussion? There is an amendment on the desk. Mr. Majors, would you please read Committee the Whole Amendment 1 to 1385. Committee the Whole Amendment 1 to House Bill 1385. Senator Johnston moved to amend the report of the committee to show that the following Johnston Floor Amendment L004 to House Bill 1385 did not pass. Senator Amending Johnston. Thank you, Madam President. And uh, this was the amendment that we ran on our little testing bill. And um, I had proposed naming this award after the former Senate President Peter Groff, and I made the mistake of not checking with the House sponsors of the bill before we did that, and apparently they had had an extensive conversation in the House about naming this award and had, uh, after much deliberation, decided that they insisted on keeping there with no names attached to this award because they wanted it to exactly mirror the way that the High School Activities Association awards go, which are not named. Uh, so. After some lengthy debate, the House sponsors uh, have agreed to work on doing a standalone piece of legislation next year, I think, to name uh, a separate academic award after Senator Groff. They would very much like to do it. They just uh, apparently had an agreement before it came to us not to name this after anyone. And so, uh, regretfully, I'm going to ask for an I vote on, on Cal Amendment 1 to take that amendment off uh, in, in deference to our House sponsors. Any discussion on Committee of the Whole Amendment 1? Are there any no votes? With uh, Senator Brophy as a no. With 33 and Senator Talktrop as a no. With 32 ayes, two no, zero absent, one excused. Okay, let, let's go back and ask if there are any no votes to Committee of the Whole Amendment 1 to House Bill 1385. Senator Renfro, did you want to be a no? Okay. Senator Talktrop, I've got you. Senator Brophy, I've got you. With 32 ayes, 2 no, 0 absent, 1 excused. Committee of the Whole Amendment 1 is adopted. We are back to the Committee of the Whole Report. Any discussion on the Committee of the Whole Report? Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, there are no, zero absent, and one excused, the Committee of the Whole Report is adopted.
House Bill 1360 is amended. House Bill 1319 is amended. House Bill 1381 is amended. House Bill 1385. House Bill 1029 is amended. House Bill 1366 is amended. House Bill 1343 is amended. House Bill 1384 is amended. House Bill 1376. House Bill 1382 is amended. House Bill 1102 is amended. House Bill 1396 is amended. Passed on second reading and order revised. Placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. House Bill 1001 laid over until May 6th and retaining its place on the calendar. House Bill 1316 lost on second reading. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam President. For those looking for dinner, it's on its way. should be here in about 15 minutes, so just keep your... I know, 7.30 is behind us. Um, Madam President, and folks, just uh, folks, uh, colleagues, uh, just so you know where we're going, uh, we're going to proceed to House amendments, then we're going to do uh, resolutions, most of which are on consent and then do the two memorials that are on and the two governor's appointments should go rather quickly. But just to give you a heads up, that's where we're proceeding. Right now, Madam President, I move the Senate grant permission to the State Veterans and Military Affairs Committee to meet at the microphone in the well upon adjournment for the purpose of hearing Senate, or excuse me, House Bill 1036 for action only. You've heard the motion, all in favor say aye. Opposed, no. No one has it. I guess the ayes have it. Aye. Permission is granted uh, for State Veterans and Military Affairs to meet at the microphone for purposes of hearing House Bill 1036 for action only upon adjournment. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam President. I move we proceed out of order to consideration of House amendments. For the motion, all in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. We will take up consideration of House amendments to Senate bills. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 118? Senate Bill 118 by Senator Stedman and Representative Melton concerning improving protections for individuals with disabilities. Senator Stedman. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the Senate concur in House amendments to Senate Bill 118. Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, the amendments were very, very uh, minor. Really, they corrected some internal citation and um, changed uh, Section 804 regarding uh, people, the rights of persons who use service animals, so that it would be enforceable under the remedies provisions of Section 802. And that is the amendments, and I ask for an I vote. Motion is for the Senate to concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 118. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excused, the Senate concurs with House amendments to Senate Bill 118. Additional co-sponsors. Oh, Senator Stemmen. Thank you, Madam President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 118 as amended. Any discussion? Question is repassage of Senate Bill 118. Any no votes? With 34 I, Senator Marble, are you no? Senator Marble is a no. Senator Balmer, Senators Lemberg, Brophy, Lambert, Crowder, Shuffle, Harvey, Hill, Grantham. Mr. Minority Leader, Senator Renfro. With 22 ayes, 12 noes, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Bill 118 is readopted. Additional co sponsors. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 164? Senate Bill 164 by Senators Carolyn King and Representatives Gardner and McLaughlin concerning aerial firefighting efforts through the Division of Fire Prevention Control and the Department of Public Safety in the connection there with implementing recommendations made by the Division regarding the Colorado Firefighting Air Corps. Senator King. Thank you, President Carroll. Um, we move to concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 164. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank you, President Carroll. Um, what the House did was amend 164 to allow the director of uh, fire services to have eight, up to 18 months to uh, initiate and stand up the center of excellence. One of the concerns that the House had and I agreed with is that if you had a significant fire and you were using um, funding to stand up a center of excellence when you should be putting out fires, that probably is not the right way to start uh, this program and ask for an I vote on concurrence. 
Any discussion on the motion? Question is for the Senate to concur with House Amendments to Senate Bill 164. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excused, the Senate concurs with House Amendments to Senate Bill 164. Senator King. Thank you, President Kerr. I move uh, for the repassage of House or Senate Bill 164. Any discussion? Question is readoption of Senate Bill 164. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excused, Senate Bill 164 is readopted. I believe everybody was a co-sponsor on this the first time, so I guess not really, yep, ask if any additional ones, because you guys are all there. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 174? Senate Bill 174 by Senators Heath and Johnston and Representatives McLaughlin and Pabano concerning the creation of the Prosecution Fellowship Program. Senator Heath. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the House concur with the Senate. Uh, that the Senate concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 174. Get it right. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam President. What uh, This is the... Uh, creation of the Prosecution Fellowship Program, and what the House felt is that we should leave it unlimited numbers, but that the both law schools contribute 20% to the program. Uh, and we both uh, move we concur with that. Any discussion on the motion? Motion is for the Senate to concur with House Amendments to Senate Bill 174. Are there any no votes? Senator Brophy? Senator Marble? Senator Hill, Mr. Minority Leader, Senators Shuffle, Crowder, Lambert, Lundberg. This is on concurrence. With 26, and Senator Renfro is a no on concurrence. With 25 ayes, 9 no, 0 absent, 1 excused, the Senate concurs with House Amendments to Senate Bill 174. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam President. We move the readoption of Senate Bill 174. Any discussion? Question is readoption of Senate Bill 174. Are there any no votes? Senators Balmer, Mr. Minority Leader, Senator Shuffle, Crowder, Lambert, Harvey, Lundberg, Marble, Hill. With 25 ayes, 9 noes, 0 absent, 1 excused. Senate Bill 174 is readopted. Additional co sponsors. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 182? Senate Bill 182 by Senator Hodge, Representative Pennsylvania, concerning procedures governing discussions by boards of education and school districts while meeting in executive session. Senator Hodge. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the Senate concur with amendments made by the House to Senate Bill 182. And it, uh, please proceed. What the House has done is put, if you should happen to record your executive sessions, you need to retain them for 24 months, which is the statute of limitations. Any discussion? Motion is for the Senate to concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 182. Are there any no votes? Mr. Minority Leader, Senators Renfro, Grantham, Shuffle, Marble, Lundberg, Herpin, King, Harvey, Lambert, Senator Lundberg, I've got you, Senator Hill, Senator Roberts, Senator Rivera, Senator John. These are no votes on Senate Bill 182, Senator Talkdrop. Thank you. Let me restate this. I'm tired and I think I was confusing. This, this motion is on concurrence to House Amendments to Senate Bill 182. Senator Studman, Senator Talktrop, Senator John. With 18 ayes, 16 noes, 0 absent, and 1 excused, the Senate concurs with House Amendments to Senate Bill 182. Senator Hodge. Thank you. I move for the readoption of Senate Bill 182. Question is readoption of Senate Bill 182. Any discussion? <laughs> Are there any no votes 
on Senate Bill 182 on readoption. Senators Lambert, Harvey, Shuffle, Crowder, Brophy, Herpin, Lundberg, Marble, Grantham, Rivera, King, Roberts, Balmer. Mr. Minority Leader, Senator Renfro, Senator Hill, I've got you. With 18 ayes, 16 noes, zero absent, and one excuse, Senate Bill 182 is readopted. Additional co sponsors. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 184? Senate Bill 184 by Senator Schwartz and Representative Quorum concerning oversight of the industrial hemp program. Senator Schwartz. Thank you, Madam President. I move Senate Bill 184 on third reading and final passage and ask for an I vote. And I'm, excuse me. Thank you very much. It's late. I'm going to start all again. I, I concur with House amendments on Senate Bill 184, our um, industrial hemp program bill. Thank you, Senator Schwartz. Please proceed with your explanation of House amendments to Senate Bill 184. And thank you, Madam President. And what we have done in this bill is simply uh, coordinate um, the provisions of this bill with the provisions of Senate Bill 215. Any discussion on the motion? Yep, yep. Motion is for the Senate to concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 184. Are there any no votes? Senator Brophy. Yep. With 33 ayes, one no, zero absent, one excuse, the Senate concurs with House amendments to Senate Bill 184. Senator Schwartz. Thank you, Madam President. And I move Senate Bill 184 on third reading and final. Oh, on, on final passage and readoption of Senate Bill 184. Question is readoption of Senate Bill 184. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, and one excused, Senate Bill 184 is readopted. Additional co sponsors. <laughs> Senator Harvey. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 186? Senate Bill 186 by Senator Schwartz and Kerr and Representative Tyler concerning the aggregation of efficiency projects in small communities in order to attract private sector investment through performance contracting. Senator Schwartz. Thank you, Madam President. I move that we concur with uh, House amendments to Senate Bill 186. What the House amendment did was simply to uh, clarify the funding for the program for uh, Department of Local Affairs that in the event they're, um, they are not able to manage the program under our existing resources, they in fact will uh, have up to 5% of the uh, funding from the, the grant program to cover their expenses. Senator Renfro. Um, Madam President, could we have a senatorial five? This, what we're doing isn't on our calendar that we have. So I'm kind of would like a little heads up of how we're getting to these, these, uh, these bills to do what we're doing. The Senate will stand in a brief recess. The Senate will come back to order. Um, members, after a message from the House, it has added, we're in the last three days, um, some bills for House amendments to Senate bills. 
um, to make this easier to follow, we'll continue to stand in five. We're going to print up a quick mini calendar so that folks can see the other bills uh, that were read across the house, um, and then we can go off of that calendar. And so we'll stand in a brief recess. The Senate will come back to order. Uh, the coat rule is relaxed for members, staff, and sergeants alike. And thank the minority leader for looking out for everybody. <laughs> Mr. Majors, would you uh, please read the title of the Senate Bill 186? Senate Bill 186 by Senator Schwartz and Kerr and Representative Tyler concerning the aggregation of efficiency projects in small communities in order to attract private sector investment through performance contracting. Senator Schwartz. Thank you, Madam President. I move that we concur with House Amendment to Senate Bill 186. And this is uh, simply a gra grammatical correction on page 8 uh, when it, uh, relative to the funding of the Department of Local Affairs. Any discussion on the motion to concur with uh, House amendments? It was a little motion is for the Senate to concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 186. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excused, the Senate concurs with House amendments to Senate Bill 186. Senator Kerr. Thank you, Madam President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 186. Any discussion? Question is repassage of Senate Bill 186. Are there any no votes? Senators Balmer, Lundberg, Grantham, Shuffle, Lambert, Harvey, Brophy. Senator Shuffle, I've got you, Mr. Minority Leader. Senators Renfro, Rivera, Marble, Hill. Senator Rivera, I've got you as a no. Senator Rivera is a yes. With 23 ayes, 11 noes, 0 absent, and 1 excuse, Senate Bill 186 is readopted. Additional co-sponsors. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 206? 
Senate Bill 206 by Senator Stedman and Representative Seeger concerning criminal record sealing provisions in connection there with relocating the record sealing provisions in a new part clarifying when an arrest record can be sealed and making other clarifying changes. Senator Stedman. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the Senate concur in House amendments to Senate Bill 206. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank you. There are really just um, two very minor amendments. In one place, it talked about um, uh, defendants who have entered into a uh, diversion agreement. And actually, um, the House changed that to say people who have completed a diversion agreement, you should complete your diversion before we offer, op offer you the opportunity to seal the record. And then towards the back of the bill, there's a section that has to do with sealing records by persons who have been victims of human trafficking. And they did some amendments to conform that to the human trafficking legislation that's going through this year. Ask for an aye vote. Any discussion on the motion? Question is for the Senate to concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 206. Any no votes? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excuse, the Senate concurs with House amendments to Senate Bill 206. Senator Stebbin. Thank you, Madam President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 206 as amended. Any discussion? Question is repassage of Senate Bill 206. Any no votes? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Bill 206 is readopted. Additional co-sponsors. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 3? Senate Bill 3 by Senator Nicholson and Representative Pedersen concerning child care assistance for working families in a condition there with making an appropriation. Senator Nicholson. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the Senate concur with the House Amendment to Senate Bill 3. Thank you. Please proceed. Madam President, um, the House changed the word from should to shall regarding consideration of whether there would be enough participants in each pilot program to enable researchers to evaluate whether the strategies used in the pilot program have addressed the cliff effect. Any discussion? Question is for the Senate to concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 3. Are there any no votes on concurrence? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excused, the Senate concurs with House amendments to Senate Bill 3. Senator Nicholson. Thank you, Madam President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 3 as amended. Any discussion? Question is repassage of Senate Bill 3. Are there any no votes? Mr. Minority Leader, Senators Shuffle, Harvey, Crowder, Lambert, Brophy, Marble, Grantham, Renfro, Rivera, King, Roberts, Balmer. Senator Hill. With 20 ayes, 14 noes, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Bill 3 is readopted. Additional co sponsors. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 5? Senate Bill 5 by Senator Yellowberry and Representative Ziegler and Duran concerning alternative administrative remedies for the processing of certain wage claims in connection therewith amending the provisions for written notices of a wage claim in connection therewith making and reducing appropriations. Senator Yellowberry. Thank you, Madam President. I move uh, that the Senate concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 5. Thank you. Please proceed. The House made uh, certain technical amendments ensuring that the administrative procedure followed the Administrative Procedures Act. Any discussion? Question, <laughs> question is for the Senate to concur. With House Amendments to Senate Bill 5, are there any no votes on concurrence? With 34 ayes, 0 noes, 0 absent, 1 excused, the Senate concurs with House Amendments to Senate Bill 5. Senator Yulaberry. Thank you, Madam President. I move for the readoption of Senate Bill 5. Any discussion? Question is readoption of Senate Bill 5. Are there any no votes? Senators Balmer, Mr. Minority Leader, Senators Shuffle, Crowder, Harvey, Lambert, Brophy, Herpin, Lundberg, Marble, Grantham, Renfro, Hill. With 21 ayes, 13 noes, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Bill 5 is readopted. Additional co sponsors. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 12? Senate Bill 12 by Senator Cafales and Representative Exum concerning increasing the assistance payment for the program for aid to the needy disabled in connection there with making and reducing appropriations. Senator Cafales. 
Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, colleagues. I move that the Senate concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 12. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, yes, of course. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the, um, the House made two changes uh, to the bill. One is they've increased the cap on the what's called the SSI Stabilization Fund. Uh, if you'll recall, this bill, Senate Bill 12, concerns the Aid to Needy and Disabled Program, and we were looking to increase the cash assistance. So one change is to increase the SSI Stabilization Fund, which helps us uh, meet our maintenance of effort requirements with the federal government. And the second change is to establish a two-year pilot program where three counties can participate to look at best practices uh, regarding uh, how to uh, improve the um, the, the rate of return for applications for SSI and SSDI. And by doing so, uh, we will um, save money on the A&D program, as well as uh, uh, help offset some of the costs and help people get into more uh, better quality of life situations. The question is for the Senate to concur with House Amendments to Senate Bill 12. Are there any no votes on concurrence? With 34 ayes, there no votes on concurrence. Senator Lambert. With 33 ayes, one no, zero absent, one excused. The Senate concurs with House amendments to Senate Bill 12. Senator Kafalas. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the Senate readopt re Senate Bill 12 as amended. Any discussion? Question is readoption of Senate Bill 12. Are there any no votes? Mr. Minority Leader. Senators Shuffle, Crowder, Harvey, Lambert, Brophy, Herpin, Marble, Grantham, Renfro, Balmer, Hill. With 22 ayes, 12 noes, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Bill 12 is readopted. Additional co sponsors. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 99? Senate Bill 99 by Senator Hodge, Representative May, concerning a provisional physical therapist license in connection therewith making an appropriation. Senator Hodge. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the Senate concur with amendments made by the House to Senate Bill 99. Thank you. Please proceed. Senate Bill 99 was the uh, provisional physical therapist license. And when it got to the House, Regis, which is one of two programs it does, is it's Regis and uh, University of Colorado realized that their graduation was going to happen at a time that was going to leave their people hanging for four months. So the House amended the bill to have it effective on signature. Discussion on the motion to concur? Are there any no votes on concurrence? With 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, the Senate concurs with House amendments to Senate Bill 99. Senator Hodge. Thank you, Madam President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 99. Any discussion? Question is readoption of Senate Bill 99. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, Senate Bill 99 is readopted. Additional co sponsors. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 180? Senate Bill 180 by Senator Gavallis, Representative Swam, concerning the Colorado Dental Health Care Program for low income seniors in connection there with requiring a post enactment review of the implementation of this act and making and reducing appropriations. Senator Gavallis. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the Senate concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 180. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, there were two changes that the House did for on this bill. Uh, one is on page four, and basically they uh, modified the definition of a qualified grantee, and these are lines 10 through 13. And then on page 7, uh, where we talked about uh, different dental services that may be provided, they added prophylaxis, which has to do with cleaning of teeth. I, that's it. The motion is for the Senate to concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 180. Any discussion? Are there any no votes on concurrence? Senator Lambert. With 33 ayes, one no, zero absent, one excused, the Senate concurs with House amendments to Senate Bill 180. Senator Kafalis. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I move that the Senate uh, readopt uh, Senate Bill 180 as amended. 
Any discussion? Or <laughs> are the <laughs> question is readoption. Are there any no votes? Senators Lambert, Harvey, Mr. Minority Leader, Senator Shuffle, Renfro, Grantham, Marble, Lundberg, Brophy, Balmer, Hill, Rivera. With 22 ayes, 12 noes, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Bill 180 is readopted. Additional co sponsors. Oops, lost the gavel. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 192? Senate Bill 192 by Senator Hodge and Representatives Becker and Wright concerning the regulation of facilities licenses with regard to classified radioactive materials in connection therewith making an appropriation. Senator Hodge. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the Senate concur with the amendments made by the House to Senate Bill 192. Thank you. Please proceed. What happened? The Senate stripped some things out of the bill. The House put them back in. With the House version, we ask that radioactive technologies be under a CDPHE radioactive materials license. I think that's an important thing. We also said a, a CDPHE radioactive materials license, which the bill requires, is the state's version of NRC's source materials license, and CDPHE is the lead for NRC. And it calls for the active cleanup of the Cotter mine. Discussion on concurrence? Senator Roberts? Two right after this. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Well, for me, the uh, amendments we made here in the Senate were critically important to be able to support this bill. So uh, I urge a no vote on concurrence. The West End of Montrose County uh, is very different than the uh, folks over in the Fremont area. And I would just say that this will have really detrimental effects. The only thing they got going in the West End of Montrose County is uranium and uh, vanadium. And this will have a real negative impact. So I urge a no vote, please. Senator Crowder. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I also felt that the, uh, the the amendments we put on at the Senate was ideal for everybody involved. I thought, you know, it took care of business, it took care of cleanup, it took care of everything. So I also vote for an, or urge a no vote on this uh, 192. Concur. The motion is for the Senate to concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 192. Are there any no votes on concurrence? Senator John. Senators Talktrop, Mr. Minority Leader, Senator Shuffle, Crowder, Harvey, Lambert, Herpin, Lumberg, Marble, Rivera, King, Renfro, Roberts, Hill, Balmer, Brophy, Senator Grantham, Senator Newell. With 15 ayes, 19 noes, 0 absent, 1 excused, the Senate definitely does not concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 192. Senator Hodge. Well, then, I move that we adhere to the Senate position. Any discussion on that feisty motion? question is for the Senate to adhere to the Senate's position on Senate Bill 192. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excuse, the Senate adheres to the Senate's position on Senate Bill 192. Senator Hodge. Thank you. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 192 as amended. You want to withdraw your motion? Senator Hodge. Thank you, Madam President. I'm told that I can't repass until the House gets to look at what I just did. So I oh. move my motion. OK, withdrawn. <laughs> Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam President. I move we reconsider Senate Bill 182. 
The question is to reconsider both concurrence and repassage of Senate Bill 182. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Well, the no has it. No. <laughs> the ayes have it. We will reconsider both concurrence and repassage of Senate Bill 182. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 182? Senate Bill 182 by Senator Hodge, Representative Pettison, concerning procedures governing discussions by boards of education or school districts while meeting in executive session. Senator Hodge. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the Senate concur with the amendments made by the House to Senate Bill 182. Question is to concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 182. Are there any no votes? Mr. Minority Leader, Senators Shuffle, Lambert, Harvey, Herpin, Brophy, Crowder, Lundberg, Marble, Grantham, Renfro, Rivera, Roberts, King, Hill, Balmer, John, Stedman, Talktrap. With 15 ayes, 19 noes, 0 absent, 1 excused, the Senate does not concur with the House amendments to Senate Bill 182. Senator Hodge. Well, how about we go to conference committee? <laughs> the motion is for the Senate to reject the House amendments to Senate Bill 182 and that a conference committee be formed. Are there any no votes? Senator Lumberg. Senator Renfro. Senators Marble, Hill, Balmer, Lambert. With 28 ayes, 6 noes, 0 absent, 1 excused, the Senate rejects the House amendments to Senate Bill 182, and a conference committee has been requested. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I regret to announce that somehow the pizza delivery man is lost. And um, so, so, yeah. The, the, we, we need to describe where we are, but uh, believe it or not, we are told that the owner is trying to reach the, the driver and find out where he is. So it's, <laughs> is it going to be free is the question. Let's lobby and, and, and make it free. So uh, back to business. We'll keep plowing ahead. Madam President, to help get through everything, I am placing Senate Joint Resolutions 31. 32, 33, and 38, along with Senate Resolution 3, and House Joint Resolutions 1009, 1018, and 1019, and Senate Joint Resolution 40 on a consent calendar. <laughs> Those resolutions will be placed on the consent calendar. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to all of those resolutions on the consent calendar. Senate Joint Resolution 31 by Senator King and Representative McCann concerning the establishment of Colorado Safe Schools Month. Senate Joint Resolution 32 by Senator King and Representative Gardner concerning the communication of wildland firefighting best practices between the governments of California and Colorado to aid in the continued advancement of the state's firefighting programs. Senate Joint Resolution 33 by Senator Heath and Representative Hollinghorst concerning the convening date for the 2015 first regular session of the 70th General Assembly. Senate Joint Resolution 38 by Senator Stedman and Harvey and Representatives Kagan and Conte concerning uniform sales and use tax definitions for home rural, mun home rural municipalities that locally collect their sales and use taxes. Senate Resolution 3 by Senator Balmer concerning congressional action to facilitate legal financial service services for the marijuana industry. House Joint Resolution 1009 by Representative Williams and Senator Uliberry concerning request that Congress restore the Federal Voting Rights Act of 1965 as amended. House Joint Resolution 1018 by Representative Sane and Becker and Senator Marble concerning the importance of preserving water supplies for Colorado's agricultural economy. House Joint Resolution 1019 by Representatives Gardner and Joshi and Senators Cadman and Herbie concerning the commemoration of the El Paso County Medical Society and the volunteers of the Med Medical Reserve Corps of El Paso County. Senate Joint Resolution 40 by Senator Heath and Representative Hollinghorst concerning the appointment of a joint committee to notify the governor that the second regular session of the 69th General Assembly is about to adjourn CNADA. Mr. Majority Leader.
Thank you, Madam President. I move for adoption of all the resolutions on the consent calendar and their associated committee reports, including Senate Joint Resolutions 31, 32, 33, and 38, Senate Resolution 3 and its Business, Labor, and Technology Committee Report, House Joint Resolutions 1009, 1018, and 1019, and Senate Joint Resolution 40. Is there any discussion on any of the resolutions on the consent calendar? Ah, um, actually one of them I believe had a committee report. Is there any discussion on the BLT committee report on Senate Resolution 3? Are there any no votes on that committee report to Senate Resolution 3? With 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, and one excused, the committee report is adopted. Is there any discussion on any of the resolutions on the consent calendar? Are there any no votes on any of the resolutions on the consent calendar? With 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, the resolutions on the consent calendar are adopted. We'll take co-sponsors uh, one at a time. Co-sponsors on Senate Joint Resolution 31. Senators Kerr, Todd, Zenzinger, Stedman, Crowder, Roberts, Renfro, Herpin, Rivera, Newell. Co-sponsors on Senate Joint Resolution 32. Senators Lambert, Crowder, Rivera. Senator Herpin. Co-sponsors on Senate Joint Resolution 33. I'm sorry, what? Okay, I guess there are some hands I missed on Senate Joint Resolution 32. That's Wildland Firefighting Best Practices. If, if you want to co-sponsor that, let me double check. I got you, Senator Schwartz, Kafalis, Talktrop, Roberts, Rivera. Got you, Senator Talktrop, Senator Kerr, Senator John, Senator Newell, Senators Todd, Jones, Lambert. Co-sponsors on Senate Joint Resolution 33. Co-sponsors on Senate Joint Resolution 38. Co-sponsors on Senate, Re Re did you want to co-sponsor Senate Joint Resolution 38, Senator Newell? And Senator Uliberry. Co-sponsors on Senate Resolution 3. Senator John, Senator Johnston, Senator Talktrop, Senators Aguilar, Roberts, Jones, Kerr, Todd, Roberts. Co-sponsors on House Joint Resolution 1009, Senators Kerr, Talktrop, Stedman, Newell, Kafalis, Madam President Pro Tem, Senators Nicholson, Todd, please have the president. Senator Crowder. Co-sponsors on House Joint Resolution 1018. Mr. Majority Leader would like to co-sponsor House Joint Resolution 1009. Got you. And Senator Rivera, Senator Aguilar, Senator John. Senator Johnston, Senator Jones, Senator Zenzinger, Senator Talktrap. These are co-sponsors on House Joint Resolution 1009. Senator Nicholson, we got you. Okay, co-sponsors on House Joint Resolution. Senator Rivera, I've got you as a co-sponsor on House Joint Resolution 1009.
Um, do you not want to be a co-sponsor on 1009? Please remove Senator Rivera as the co-sponsor on 1009. Co-sponsors on House Joint Resolution 1018. Senators Lambert, Herpin, Lundberg, King, Rivera, Mr. Minority Leader, Senators Renfro, Toktrop, Kerr, John, Aguilar, Nicholson, Zenzinger. Grantham? Please have the President. Co-sponsors on House Joint Resolution 1019. Senators Lambert, Rivera. Co uh, Senator Grantham, did you want to be a co-sponsor on House Joint Resolution 1019? Okay. Co-sponsors on Senate Joint Resolution 40. Okay, consideration of resolutions. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Joint Resolution 36? Senate Joint Resolution 36 by Senators Schwartz and Newell and Representatives Holy Horse of Vigo concerning celebrating the restoration of the State Capitol Dome. Senator Schwartz. Thank you, Madam President. I move, we move a Senate Joint Resolution 36, and there's an amendment on the desk. There is an amendment on the desk. Mr. Majors, would you please read L001? L001 is Senator Schwartz. And thank you, Madam President. And L001 simply includes more of the individuals that have been responsible for this remarkable restoration of the Colorado State Capitol and, and the Dome. Ask for an I vote. Senator Lambert on L001. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, is this the is this the uh, amendment, the Totrop amendment, that states if you break it, you buy it? When she drops the ball. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's not in the budget. <laughs> this is this is Senator the Schwartz. Madam President, those lamps are not in the budget. <laughs> <laughs> Question is the adoption of L001 on SJR 36. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, and one excused, L001 is adopted. Further discussion on SJR 36. Senator Newell. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Well, um, my co-sponsor uh, here and I serve as chairs of, I'm chair of the Capitol Building Advisory Committee. We have been uh, hearing about this actually for years now. Uh, we're so excited that we finally will have an unveiling in uh, late summer, and I hope you all can make it there. We have heard horror stories about the extreme resting and deterioration that we're actually lucky that we did not have any human injury uh, as a result, because literally if some of you got to do the tour, uh, some of the pillars were actually being held up by caulking and paint. And uh, that's how badly we needed this uh, renovation. So we're both excited to, uh, to bring this resolution forward and just honor that this, uh, this actually, the, the uh, restoration project is currently on time and under budget. So we're, we're very excited about that too. Senator Schwartz. And thank you, Madam President. And, and again, it was the 69th General Assembly that actually regilded the dome for the first time since 1908. And this, uh, this is, a, I think, been a remarkable project. We all can appreciate how remarkable this building looks and the, the shiny new dome. Hopefully it'll last another 100 years. But under our watch, we were able to, under budget, on time, use Colorado Gold to uh, regild the, uh, the, um, the, the, the dome of this capital, and we just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention and help celebrate this, uh, this, this beautiful new building. Senator Harvey. Thank you, Madam President. I rise in support of this, and I'd like to offer a conceptual amendment that we thank Scott Renfro for the idea, and that it could have come under a lot better 
um, budget could have come under budget a lot more had we kept it where the historical society was funding the majority of it. Senator Schwartz. Thank you, Madam President. And we want to thank the Historical Society and or History Colorado for their funding of the project. And uh, it would not have come off without their, their attention and their care and their dollars. Senator Uliberry. Thank you, Madam President. I'm hesitant to support the resolution because I think the scaffolding has obstructed the dome and prevented the pizza man from finding the capital. And I'm very hungry at this point in time. <laughs> Is there anything anyone else would like to say about this resolution about our dome? Yeah, Senator Rivera. Thank you, Madam President. I just say the next time that we order pizza, tell him to go where the dome is at. Good advice. <laughs> okay, the question before the Senate, the adoption of Senate Joint Resolution 36, are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Joint Resolution 36 is adopted. <coughs> Senator Schwartz. Thank you, Madam President. I ask that we use the morning roll call uh, to be added as co-sponsors. Again, this is going to be sent to all the those that have been involved in the construction and, and care and dedication to the dome. Any objection? Saying none, the morning roll call will be added as co-sponsors to Senate Joint Resolution 36. Consideration of memorials. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Joint Memorial 5. Senate Joint Memorial 5 by Senator Crowder and Representative Holding Horse considering memorializing Congress to enact legislation allowing certain non-physician health care professionals to certify and amend home health plans of care. Senator Crowder. Uh, thank you, Madam President. There is an amendment on this. Uh, I move uh, SMJ 005L002. All righty, there is an amendment on the desk. Mr. Majors, would you please read L002? Amendment L002. Senator, Senator Crowder, go ahead and move it. President, all, uh, all the amendment does is uh, page 2, line 12, strike hospice. Uh, what, we're doing, what we're doing on this is basically uh, uh, sending a, uh, a, a, uh, a joint resolution to the, the Senate asking them to expand for expansion of, of nurses and nurse practitioners as well as uh, physician assistants. We believe that this time and place that uh, the authority should be expanded for these uh, very qualified people, uh, especially in rural Colorado, as they, uh, as they perform their duties for Medicare and Medicaid uh, very well, but they have to do it under the auspice of a doctor. And right now the federal government is actually working on this, so it, it looks like a, a good fit, you know, uh, and with that, Madam President, I would just uh, move this forward. Okay, let's move L002. Senator Crowder, if you'd move that. I did. Uh, you discussed it, but I... Uh, yeah, I we, moved uh, L002. Thank you very much. For an vote. Uh, any other discussion on L002? Are there any no votes on L002? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excused, Amendment L002 is adopted. Back to Senate Joint Memorial 5, Senator Crowder. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I move Senate Joint, Senate Joint Memorial 005 and ask for an aye vote. Any discussion? Question, is the adoption of Senate Joint Memorial 5, are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Joint Memorial 5 is adopted. <laughs> Senator Crowder, did you want to move co-sponsors? Senator Crowder. Morning roll call, if that would be acceptable to everybody. Madam President. Anyone object to that? Saying none, the morning roll Thank call you. will be added as co-sponsors to Senate Joint Memorial 5. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Joint Memorial 6? Senate Joint Memorial 6 by Senator Lambert and Representative Josie memorializing Congress to grant Colorado Research Institutions the authority to conduct medical clinical trials regarding marijuana's medical efficacy. Senator Lambert. Uh, Madam President, I move Senate Joint Memorial 6, and I ask that it not be read at length. Thank you very much. Please and proceed. I move uh, the committee report from Senate Health and Human Services. 
Okay. Any discussion on the Health and Human Services Committee report? Senator Lambert. This is just a, uh, a small technical change on uh, the committee report. I asked for an I vote. Question is the Health and Human Services Committee report. Are there any no votes on the committee report? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excused, the committee report is adopted. We're back to Senate Joint Memorial 6, Senator Lambert. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Members, uh, during our discussions of marijuana, we've of often come across one observation, I think it was made about three times today, and that is why are we not going ahead and actually doing research testing on the different strains of marijuana in Colorado for their, both for their benefits and for their, uh, their, their possible risks. Uh, what we heard in the Joint Budget Committee from University of Colorado in particular was that they feel that uh, they are significantly restricted in doing research by current federal law. Uh, one option they have is simply violate the law and hope that they don't get arrested and hope that they get forgiveness from the federal government. I don't think that's the way to do business. Uh, so this is an actual letter from our body, uh, the, the legislature of Colorado, to the U.S. Congress and Senate asking for re legislative relief that we can actually, in the circumstances where marijuana, especially medical, uh, medicinal marijuana is legal in the state of Colorado, that we can actually do clinical, scientific, objective research testing through our research organizations. Uh, so I would ask her and I vote on Senate Joint Memorial 6. Senator Schwartz. Thank you, Madam President, and ask um, just for the record that inherent in that conversation will be uh, medical research on hemp as well. Senator Lambert. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And yes, uh, we had uh, some discussion with that, with especially with Colorado State University. Uh, they suggested we not actually put the hemp in this particular memorial, but obviously when, first of all, the federal government still thinks it's marijuana, whether it's hemp or not, so it, it covers their equities. Uh, we also had some very convincing discussions in the JBC when the uh, Department of Agriculture came in and briefed us this uh, I guess it was last year when they came into the JVC, but uh, that will be inherently, I think, a part of the discussion when this finally gets to the Congress and they take action. Senator Schwartz. Thank you, Madam President. And also we're finding the, the benefits of uh, medical research and how critical that will be, uh, especially to young children that are subject to seizures and opportunity that um, we, we have in, in really creating a, 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 a Identifying what the exact composition of, of this uh, of these these plants will be and what it can can treat in terms of the THC levels and CBD levels and but we need to also have the medical color medical enforcement division MED be a partner in this and we might have seen the article this weekend about how we are barring individuals from access to having the marijuana individual samples being taken so this uh, this all is very complicated and it needs to be resolved, and it really will support a very important critical industry for the state and also bring the medical uh, potential forward in, as soon as we can get it. Senator Lambert. Th thank you. And that is one of the significant restrictions that the state currently has is that research at the University of Colorado, in particular at Anschutz, uh, is really restricted in doing any kind of clinical research they can observe current practices with uh, dispensaries and especially on things like the uh, uh, anti-seizure medications, but they cannot do clinical tests. So this needs to be changed in federal law. Uh, I ask for your I vote. The question is the adoption of Senate Trump Memorial 6. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Joint Memorial 6 is adopted. Senator Lambert. Thank you. I ask for the current roll call as uh, co-sponsors of Senate Joint Memorial 6. Any objection? The current roll call will be added as co-sponsors to Senate Joint Memorial 6. Um, members, um, I guess better late than never, uh, pizza is here. 
or Jimmy John, somebody, food is here, set up outside. Um, feel free to grab some for yourself or take some to go, but uh, we do have food here and to-go boxes. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam President. I move for reconsideration of House Amendments to Senate Bills, and specifically Senate Bill 3. The motion is to reconsider uh, House amendments and readoption of Senate Bill 3. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. The Senate will reconsider House amendments and read passage of Senate Bill 3. Mr. Majors, would you please read the title to Senate Bill 3? Stay in recess while we re retrieve the bill. Senate will come back to order. Mr. Majors, please read the title to Senate Bill 3. Senate Bill 3 by Senator Nagelson and Representative Pedersen concerning child care assistance for working families and a connection there with making an appropriation. Senator Nicholson. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the Senate concur with the House Amendment to Senate Bill 3. Um, any discussion on the motion? Are there any no votes on the motion for the Senate to concur with House Amendments? Senator Lambert. With 33 ayes, one no, zero absent. One excused, the Senate concurs with House amendments to Senate Bill 3. Senator Nicholson. Thank you, Madam President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 3. Any discussion? Question is the readoption of Senate Bill 3. Are there any no votes? Mr. Minority Leader, Senators Shuffle, Harvey, Lambert, Lundberg, Brophy, Hill, Herpin, Marble, Grantham, Rivera, Balmer. King. Roberts. With 20 ayes. A roll call vote has been required. Okay. Uh, Senator Renfro is a no on Senate Bill 3. With 19 ayes, 15 noes, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Bill 3 is readopted. Additional co sponsors. Consideration of governor's appointments. Mr. Majors, would you please read the appointments to the Colorado State Fair Authority Board of Commissioners? Member of the Colorado State Fair Authority Board of Commissioners for a term expiring November 1, 2018. The Honorable Lois Ann Toktrop of Thornton, Colorado, a Democrat residing in the 7th Congressional District, appointed. <laughs> Senator Schwartz, I believe this was your committee. Thank you, Madam President. We have a very important appointment to consider this evening for the Colorado State Fair Authority Board of Commissioners. We have the Honorable Lois Ann Toptock of Thornton, Colorado, a Democrat residing in the 7th Congressional District. I move for Senate confirmation of the Colorado State Fair Authority Board of County Commissioners. Mr. Majors, would you please read the appointment? They did. Thank you. All right. You've read it. So uh, you've moved it? it. Any discussion? Any Senator discussion of Brophy. the <laughs> You know, we grilled this appointment in the Ag Committee. And I gotta tell you, I have some reservations, some real reservations. You know, at one point in her illustrious 16-year career, I'm positive that she has voted to move said state fair from its home in Pueblo to Brighton or somewhere like that, located in Adams County. And what a travesty that would be because, I mean, Pueblo has been the home of the state fair for what now, a hundred years. But she did repent from that and swore that she would support keeping the state fair in Pueblo for the next hundred years. 
And because of that, and because she actually sang the CSU fight song for us in committee and did a jig, I recommend that we vote yes on this appointment. <laughs> Any further discussion? Madam President Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam uh, President. I also am a member of the Agriculture Committee, and we gave a test, and Senator Tot Trop was not able to distinguish between a cow and a horse. So I don't think that she, be, <laughs> she should be on the State Fair Board. No impugning members. <laughs> Senator Rivera. Thank you, Madam President. I don't know if I can support this um, nomination unless unless the Honorable Tontrop decides she wants to move to Pueblo. Now we've been talking some business. The motion is for Senator Tontrop to move from Adams County to Pueblo. <laughs> okay, the motion is to confirm our Honorable Lois Ann Tontrop to the Colorado State Fair Board of Commissioners. Are there any no votes? <laughs> Senator Tontrop. <laughs> Madam Chair, I uh, take a 17C. <laughs> Senator Tocktrop has taken a 17C. Are these no votes? Yes. Mr. Minority Leader, Senators Kerr, John, Grantham, Guzman, Harvey, Lambert, Shuffle, Rivera, Mr. Majority Leader, Senator Schwartz, Senator Hodge, Senators Eulaberry, Todd, Lundberg, Herpin, Marble, Johnston, Zenzinger. We got 14 eyes. <laughs> 19 no's, zero absent when excused. It is lovingly rejected at this moment. Senator, Mr. Minority Leader. I give intent to reconsider. <laughs> How about voting on the uh, prevailing side? Do you want to go ahead and reconsider now? <laughs> Senator Schwartz. Thank you, Madam President. Having voted on the prevailing side, I ask for reconsideration. No, oh, that's okay. Oh, oh. We're in the last three days of session. Oh. Your oh. notice of intent does not hold it up anymore. Oh. The motion is to reconsider the confirmation of Lois Talktrap to the Colorado State Fair Authority Board of Commissioners. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Ayes have it. We will reconsider. Mr. Majors, would you please read the appointment? Member of the Colorado State Fair Authority Board of Commissioners for a term expiring November 1, 2018, the Honorable Lois Ann Talktrap, Thornton, Colorado, Democrat, residing in the 7th Congressional District, appointed. Senator Schwartz. <laughs> you move for reconfirmation? Thank you, Madam President. I move for the reconfirmation or the confirmation of the Honorable Lois and Toftrock to the Colorado State Fair Authority Board of Commissioners with heartiest congratulations for her service, continued service to the state of Colorado. Looking forward to her representation on that board. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused. Senator Toktrop, or in 117C, my apologies, three, 33 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, and 117C. The Honorable Lois Toktrop is confirmed to the State Fair Authority Board of Commissioners. Yay. <laughs> Senator Toktrop, uh, yep, thank speech. You, Madam President, I know everybody's tired and wants to go home, but I do know the difference between a horse and a cow, and I do know the difference between the back end and the front end of one, honestly, yes. And um, if anybody needs fare tickets, let me know. <laughs> Mr. Majors, would you please read the appointment to the State Board of Stock Inspection Commission Commissioners? Member of the State Board of Stock, Stock Inspection Commissioners for a term expiring May 1st, 2018, Marla A. Rock of Ray, Colorado, representing the confinement cattle industry, reappointed. Senator Schwartz. Paper. 
Madam President, thank you. I move for the confirmation of Marla A. Rock of Ray, Colorado, as a member of the State Board of Stock Inspection Commissioners. Any discussion? Question is the confirmation of Marla A. Rock to the State Board of Stock Inspection Commissioners. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 1 excused, Marla A. Rock is confirmed to the State Board of Stock Inspection Commissioners. Okay. Uh, the President appoints to the Conference Committee on Senate Bill 182, Senator Hodge, Chair, Senators Johnston and Bulmer. Signing of bills. May 5th, 2014, the President signed House Bills 1014, 1072, 1170, 1175, 1205, 1207, 1300, and 1353. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam President. Thanks, everyone, for hanging in there. We have completed uh, the, um, for the Monday and Tuesday's agenda, which uh, I think we'll all appreciate uh, tomorrow. We might not appreciate it right now. The food is uh, still out there, so enjoy it. And with that, Madam President, I'm going to move that the Senate adjourn to the second to last day of the session, which is Tuesday, May 6th at 9 a.m. You've heard the motion. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Eyes have it. The Senate will adjourn until 9 a.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, May 6th.